In this video, we're going to cover physics and signals in Godot, two topics that are really important on their own and work incredibly well together. Let's get started with basic physics. In Godot, there are four nodes that deal with physics, at least in 2D. Area 2D, Static Body 2D, Character Body 2D, and Rigid Body 2D. An Area 2D is just an area. It doesn't really do much on its own, but it's really good for detecting collisions. Next up, we have a Static Body 2D, and this one has collisions, but it cannot move on its own. For that, we have a Character Body 2D. This one does have collisions, and it can move. That movement, by the way, happens via code. If you want to have physics-based movement, then you want to have a rigid body 2D. This one has collisions and moves, and all of the movement happens via physics. What is also really important is that all four of them need a collision shape. But that we can explore right away in Godot. Here we are, and I want to start with the first important node, and that is a character body 2D, because this is what the player is going to be. For that, inside of Godot, at the moment, the parent node of our player is simply a node 2D. But this I want to change. And for that, I'm going to right click on this node and then go to change type. Then we get to the dialog again. And for this one, I want to have a character body 2D. If I now press enter, we are going to get a warning sign that this node has no shape. That we are going to worry about in just a second. First of all though, when I open the script, at the moment, we are extending a node 2D. This is not correct anymore, so this has to be a character body 2D. If we didn't change that, we would be getting an error message. Next up then, inside of the 2D editor. What we have to make sure is that we account for the warning that Godot is giving us. Meaning, we have to give this node a shape. And this you can do in two ways. If you add another node, you can add a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D. Both would work and let's start with the easier one, a collision shape 2D. If I double click on this one, nothing happens inside of the editor. Instead, what we get is another node and this one has another warning that we have to provide a shape. And this happens inside of the inspector, there we have a shape. If you click on the drop down menu, we can select a shape for this particular body. And basically what you want to do is select the shape that works reasonably well with it. I suppose we could go with a capsule shape and then you get a shape and then this shape you can modify to whatever you need. And that I think looks okay. Not amazing, but now we don't have a warning anymore. So that's a really good sign. Although I don't like this collision shape, so let's get rid of the collision shape 2D and replace it with a collision polygon 2D. With that, we have basically the same problem that we have to provide a shape, or in this case, a polygon 2D. To provide that one, you want to look at the top because in there, we can draw a couple of points if you click on the plus symbol. And then you can simply outline a shape for the body that you want to create. It doesn't have to be too precise, but do it reasonably okay. Something like this would work just fine. And with that, we have a collision shape. So that's pretty good. This would now be the physical shape of this node, meaning we can work with collisions, but for collisions, we need at the very least two bodies. And for that, inside of the level, I want to use physics bodies to prevent the player from going outside of this area. Because at the moment, if I run the game, the player can simply leave the screen, which shouldn't happen. For that, inside of the level, I am first of all going to add a new node 2D. But this one is just for organization's sake. So I want to change it to, let's call it borders. In there, as a child, I'm going to add a static body 2D. This one, once again, is giving us a warning that there's no shape. To fix that, we have to add a child, which has to be a collision shape 2D. Or a polygon, both would work, but a shape for this one is better. Because all we really want is a rectangular shape. Let me zoom in, and there we can see we have an area. And on this one, we can change the size, or we can change the position. Also, if you look at the inspector and click on the shape, you can customize the size with specific numbers. And let's do this one for now. 
I want to set a height of 720 because I know that's the height of the window. And then this is going to be the right side of the screen. Something like this. You don't have to be too specific here, but do it reasonably okay. And with that, we have a right side collision. However, if I run the game and I try to go all the way to the right, we can still go over this border. So something isn't right yet. And that is because inside of the script, we are updating the position of the player ship. And this is not how character body 2D is supposed to be used. Instead, what you are supposed to be doing is set a velocity. Velocity is an inbuilt attribute of a character body 2D, meaning we just have to assign a value and then we get something useful. In my case, all I really want to do is give it the direction multiplied by the speed. Delta, we don't need because Godot adds this one automatically. With that, we can get rid of the position entirely. And all we have to do now is call one method called move and slide. This one applies the inbuilt velocity to get actual movement. And now, if I run the game again, I can still move around just as before. However, if I now go to the right, Godot does respect the collision. And that feels really good. Cool. I am very happy with that. What we can do now as well is place the player a bit more to the center, something like this, and then duplicate the static body 2D because besides a right side, I also want to have a left side. Then I can duplicate it one more time and move it all the way up here. Although the sizing for this one doesn't align anymore. And for that, we can drag the red dots and change the size. Although this doesn't work perfectly well. So what happened here? Basically, when you are copying these nodes, they all keep a reference to each other, which means when you're changing one of them, you are changing all of them, which usually isn't what you want. But you can fix it by simply getting rid of the shape and then assigning it a new shape. Now we get a completely new shape and can do with this whatever we want. And for this one, I simply want to cover the entire top side, something like this. And by the way, if you hold Alt and drag one of these points, you mirror the other side, which is super handy. Finally, I have the last shape and you can also move them via the mouse. And if you hold Shift, they're moving a bit faster. So this is another way to move them around and I want them here. Cool. With that, I can run the entire game again, and now the player is not able to leave the screen anymore. Cool, so that feels quite a bit better. Now, this isn't exactly the most elegant way of constraining the player to the window, but it's a reasonable start and a good way to get into collisions. So all that really happens in here is that the player is a character body 2D, and this one by default is colliding with static body 2Ds. The player would also collide with other character body 2Ds or rigid body 2Ds. By default, you always have a collision, although later on we can customize this behavior a little bit, where you only get collision between certain objects, or objects on certain layers to be more specific, but don't worry too much about that. Instead, what I want to do is to work on one more concept, and that is an area 2D. At the moment, the meteor, let's open the scene, is also a node 2D. This isn't good enough because we have to later on detect collisions with the meteor when the meteor hits the player or when the laser hits a meteor. And to account for that, I want to change the type as well. For this one, I want to have an area 2D. And now we once again get the same warning that this node has no shape. To give it one, we can give it a collision shape 2D. You can either look for it or you can see in the recent tab, we have a collision shape 2D as well. And now we have to give it a shape and the shape could be a circle 2D. I think that's a pretty good shape for this one. And once again, you can either use the red dot to adjust the size or you could click on it and then adjust the radius. So let's go with something like this. That seems about right. These numbers don't have to be perfect, at least for this tutorial. But if you make a real game, then pay a bit more attention to these details. They can make or break a game. Cool, so with that, we have a meteor. If I now run the game, this is not going to do anything. So there's no collision because an area 2D is not a collidable object. However, what it can do is detect a collision between a character body 2D 
and itself. But for that, we have to cover another concept, signals. And basically what that means is that every node can execute some code when a certain event occurs. In our case, for example, an area 2D can run a function when a physics body enters its area. A physics body here could be a static body 2D, a character body 2D, or a rigid body 2D. And really all that we are doing is we are executing a function and all of this is called a signal. It's ultimately incredibly simple. The way you would be using it inside of Godot, in the inspector, there is a node tab. And let me drag this one out a bit. There on top, we have signals and we have groups. Groups are not important right now, but signals cover quite a few different things. Depending on what node you have selected, you get different signals. Collision shape doesn't have very many, and Sprite2D also isn't particularly useful when it comes to signals. An Area2D node, however, has a lot and some very, very useful ones. For example, there we can run some code when an area has entered, when an area has exited, when a shape has entered, when a body has entered, and so on. In our case, we want to look for a body has entered. So we'll double click on that, and now we are getting another dialog that we have to connect this signal to some kind of script, which we cannot do at the moment because the Meteor scene doesn't have a script. To fix that, let's give the Meteor a script. We can call this meteor.gd and save it inside of the scenes folder. That's perfectly fine. Although for the template, I want to have a completely empty script. So now click on create and all we get is extends area 2D because that's all we really care about at least for now. With that, if I now click on the Meteor again and double click on body entered again, now you can see on the top node, we have a script, which means we can connect the signal to the script. And then basically all that's going to happen is we are going to call a method, which is going to call on body entered. You can change it, but usually nobody does. So click on connect. And now we get a function that will be triggered every time a body enters this area 2D. And that's literally it. So for example, what we could be doing is print body entered. If I run the code, we can go over the meteor and we get body entered. This also works multiple times and that's literally it. It's a very simple concept. There's also body exited if you want to work with that or area entered if you have multiple areas. On top of that, you are getting access to the body that has entered this area which we can print right away. If I now do all of this again, we're getting body entered and we get more details on the body that has entered. Especially for debugging purposes, this parameter can be incredibly useful. All right, and that is all I really wanted to cover for this part. So let's do an exercise and then we are good to go. What I want you guys to do, it's actually two things. Number one, I want you guys to create a laser scene. This one should be an area 2D with a sprite and a shape. You can find the graphics in the graphics folder. Besides that, create a timer node in the level scene. Now, you haven't seen a timer node yet, but it's fairly straightforward. Play around with it, it shouldn't be too difficult. And use this one with a signal to make it print the string meteor every second continuously. That should be quite a bit to work on, so pause the video now and see how far you get. Back in Godot, let's get started with the first exercise. I want to create a new scene, and this scene as a parent node should have an area 2D, which we can rename right away to laser. Also, let's save it immediately in scenes. There we have laser.tscn. That looks good. And let's go to the 2D editor so we can see a bit better what's going on. In there. We are going to need a couple of things. Most importantly, we want to have a sprite and we also want to have a collision shape 2D. To figure out the shape, we first of all need to know what the laser is looking like. And for that, on the lasers, we have a few graphics we could be working with. The color here really doesn't matter. I am going to go with laser red one and drag it into the texture. And if I zoom in a bit, you can see what this one is looking like. If you zoom in too much, it looks a bit weird, but if you zoom out, it looks much better. Since the player is quite far away from it, this is totally fine. 
So with that, we can define a shape, which we are going to do via a capsule shape 2D. I think that works pretty good. And this we want to make a bit narrower and a bit taller, and that looks about right. With that, we have a laser. This is all we needed for this bit. And by the way, this kind of setup is incredibly common in Godot, where you have some kind of physics body node as a parent. Then you have a sprite and a shape. We have the same setup for a meteor and a similar kind of setup for the player. This is essentially the basic setup for literally anything in any Godot game. You are going to create this setup all the time. Do make sure that you understand what you are doing here. All right, but anyway, with that, we have a collision shape 2D. Next up, we can work inside of the level. And also, I want to move the level all the way to the left because as a parent, it should be the first tab. Also, I can minimize the borders node 2D so the scene tree looks a bit more organized. Next up then, I want to create a new node and this we haven't seen yet, it's called a timer. And a timer, well, it's just a timer. I don't think I even have to explain what it does. If you look at the inspector, we have a couple of attributes. Wait time is the most important one and this tells you the duration of the timer. One shot tells you if this timer runs once or continuously and finally auto start tells you if this timer auto starts, which in our case we want to have. Although one shot should be off. Next up, you can look at the node tab and in there we have timeout, which is the only really important signal of a timer. This one triggers whenever the timer times out, should be obvious. Although at the moment we can't really connect it to the level because the level doesn't have a script. That is easy to fix. So with the level selected, I want to attach a node and let's call it level.gd. And for the template, I want this to be empty. Let's create it. And now we have a completely empty script. With that, back on the timer node, I want to select timeout and connect it to the level. If I now click on connect, we have on timer timeout. And in there, all I really want to do is print, I think I said meteor, although it doesn't really matter what you print here. All right, and now if I run the code, we are getting meteor after one second and this keeps on going forever. The other signal also still works where we get body entered on the meteor. That is basically all you have to know about the basics of physics objects and signals, a really important part of Godot.